Okay, so now we know how to get oscillations, but before we even begin with the math on this, we want to talk about oscillations. And to, in order for us to talk about oscillations, we actually have to have the same language to talk about this. So we're going to introduce a few new terms. And the first term we're going to do is, when we're talking about oscillations, it's also known as periodic motion. And we say period of oscillation. It's one of the major... Um, terms that we're going to be using. And the reason for that we'll see in just a second. So again, we have uh, the curve that IO plots out as a function of time, and it looks like a cosine term. And the mathematics behind this are going to give us just the definition of a cosine curve. And it's going to have some amplitude, some period of oscillation, a couple of these different variables in here. So let's start looking at what they are. So, as I said, IO has a period of about 1.7 days, which is about 42 and a half hours, to make a full trip around. So if it starts all the way to the right, goes all the way to the left, and then back all the way to the right, it completed a full rotation. And we call this term, when we're talking about oscillations, the period. So the period of oscillation for IO is 42 and a half hours. It's the length of time from where it starts to when it repeats itself. Sometimes you have to be careful of what it means to be repeat itself, but think about it when it gets back to the same location doing the same thing and it looks like it just started over again. The other thing that we know is if we look at the math down here, this is the math for a cosine, and if we wanted to figure out what this period is, well the cosine if we plot this axis as t, the cosine function, it does not relate directly to the period. It actually relates to this wonderful little term called angular frequency. And this angular frequency is related to the period by 1 over the period is equal to the angular frequency if we multiply by 2 pi. So angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi over the period. This is also equal to 2 pi times the frequency. And there's a little bit of a difference between angular frequency uh, over here and frequency over here. So they are related by 2 pi. Period tells you how long it takes to go through a cycle. Frequency is the opposite of that. It tells you how many cycles you go through in one second. Angular frequency is related to that. It's how many radians from the cosine function. Cosine takes 2 pi radians to make a full cycle. So if we were to take how many radians per second, we take the frequency, say one, one uh, period per second, or one second per period, and we figure out that one period per second, we multiply that by 2 pi, gives us 2 pi radians per second. And that's the difference between frequency and angular frequency. So it's really based off of this cosine function and how long it does does it take to complete one period. Now, as I said, we can substitute this in. So a lot of people like this equation a little bit better. Um, personally, I am a fan of this equation and just remembering these relationships. But if you want to see what it looks like, it just says that the cosine after a period of, say, 42 and a half hours, this time, this cosine function, the mathematics on this cosine function will repeat itself. So 2 pi over the period will repeat itself after the right amount of time. And that's what we want in, uh, in starting to figure out how does the math relate to the actual system. Now there's another thing in here, uh, it's called the amplitude. And the amplitude tells us how far this thing goes up and down. If you notice that the amplitude is measured from the zero point, not from negative to the positive, not from the very minimum to the maximum, but rather the, the zero to the maximum, or the negative amplitude is from the zero to the negative uh, value of the maximum, which is from zero to the minimum. Um, it's just uh, we choose that one because it makes the math look a little bit easier. So cosine function right here will oscillate between one and zero and one, or actually negative one to one. By multiplying it by a, it'll uh, oscillate between negative a to a. And that's nice for us because when we're looking at Io, it has a certain distance away from Jupiter. So in that case, uh, Io, would this would be the x direction, the x distance, the maximum x direct, uh, distance away from Jupiter that it gets.
and another, so yeah, so that's the amplitude, and this is, uh, these are the two major quantities that we, we do. There's a third quantity over here called phi. This is the phase shift, and we'll talk about that um, in a later video. But the two things we want to go away with is uh, the period of oscillation, which is related to the angular frequency or the frequency, and the other one is the amplitude of the oscillation, and knowing that mathematically they're a cosine function um, in terms of the relationships. So now we're starting to get a little into the math. Don't get too intimidated by this. It's just your plain old cosine function that repeats itself after a certain amount of time and has a certain maximum amplitude it goes through.